Released by Capcom in the year 1994 on the Super Nintendo, Breath of Fire 2 would be a direct sequel to the first installment. Written and directed by Yoshinori Kawano, who also handled the first game, the game would take place in the same world as the first game and continue conventions that would become series staples. For story, the game features a different dragon warrior named Ryu, a different winged girl named Nina, returning character Blue, and six other playable demi-humans, though only four can be fielded at a time. For gameplay, combat is much the same as the original, though layout has switched to menu-based, turn-based combat. Each character has a unique field action as well as combat action, and activities such as hunting and fishing return. The Dragon Transformation would be revamped, as well as Fusion, in which any character other than Ryu can fuse with a variety of shamans to ascend into multiple powerful forms. A player-customized town is created and developed over the course of the game that can not only provide cooking and item synthesis, but a variety of tenants may be recruited to provide unique shops and services. In addition, three different endings may be earned, and there are a few cameos from the first game. The story only gets larger from here, so let's cut it down to size with a recapitation. As the game begins, it's been 500 years since the events of the first game, as one day, a boy named Ryu is asked by his father Gaynor to look for his sister Yua. His father is also a powerful mage who helped protect the village alongside a dragon that appeared to help several years ago, and while his mother died three years ago, the same dragon has been sleeping and protecting the outskirts of their village of Gate. They find Yua at the Sleeping Dragon, where she claims she likes to nap as she sees her mother in her dreams and Gator lets the comment lie. Standing next to the dragon as well, Ryu closes his eyes, though as he stares into a dark abyss, he is surprised to find something staring back. Shaken, Ryu is shocked to return to town, not only to find his family gone, but no one in town remembers him either. He is taken in by the local priest, Father Hulk of the St. Ava Church, though that night, another orphan and thief, a dogman named Bao, already knows more than a few tricks and decides to rob the place. Running away together, the two boys head to the next town and take shelter from the storm, only to run into a large demon. The demon swats aside Bao and speaks to Ryu, calling him the destined child to open a gate, and a vision of a strange tower in a strange realm flashes before him. Ten years pass, and Ryu and Bao are now mercenaries called Rangers, working out of their hometown named Hometown. Their leader hands them a job to find a pet, and though Bao objects to the menial task, he is quick to reconsider when he sees the job comes from the princess of the Windia Kingdom, Mina. After making necessary preparations, they pray to the Dragon God, who appreciates the support since the rise of the Saint Ava Faith. Along the way, they find a derelict old house where they hear an old man named Nero cry for help and save him from giant manning roaches. He thanks them and invites them to eat this pig he found with a collar, and Bao finds it is Mina's pet they were looking for. Returning the pet, Bao was hoping for a more intimate reward from the princess, but she simply returns to the kingdom of Windia, though that night, a man named Kilgore approaches Bao with an offer. Ryu catches wind of him hiring Bao to break into a house and retrieve a treasure that was stolen from him, and Bao chooses to accept the deal. Following, Ryu bumps into a bat-winged girl leaving the mansion of a man named Trout who accuses Bao of stealing his treasure. Finding Bao, he tells Ryu he was trying to get the treasure, but a bat-winged girl stole it right before him, and the guards caught him at the scene, hence him being blamed. He figures the only way to clear his name is to find the real culprit, and so they leave to seek the girl, using tactical espionage action to slip past the guards and visit Nero, asking to lay low here in exchange for Bao helping to fix up the place. Thinking to investigate the thief at the town of Corsair, Bao apologizes and keeps a low profile while Ryu ventures ahead. Arriving, he catches word of a tough girl who will be fighting in the Colosseum, but learns tickets to her fight are sold out. Seeking the other fighter, Ryu approaches her opponent, Baba, and aggressively negotiates the option to replace him as an arena fighter. Thinking Baba is Ryu, the pre-qualifying interview committee gives him a pass, though learns his fight will be fixed in his favor. Concerned, he shares this with another gladiator and muscular member of the Shell Clan, Rand, who works with Ryu to thwart the sabotage with some preemptive antidotes. As the match begins, Ryu sees it's not the winged thief he was chasing, but a set of feisty member of the Warren Clan named Cat. Ryu wins the duel and knocks her out, but poison darts are shot at her anyway, as he quickly pushes Kat out of the way while shielding her with his body. Kat thanks Ryu for saving her life and joins him and Ran in confronting the saboteur, August. August claims the pain from the brutal fights, as well as the twisted enjoyment by the audience, all add strength to his god, transforming into a demon and attacking the trio. Banding together, Ryu, Ran, and Kat destroy him as he laughs while claiming they cannot stop his god's world from coming. Not sure what he means, Rand wishes to leave before the mess gets any larger and Kat chooses to tag along to repay her life debt, so Ryu takes them all to the secluded home of Nero. Bao assesses the new allies and sees Kat is on the simple side, advising she stick with Ryu and looking for the winged thief while Rand helps with the renovation. Rand mentions he's heard of a winged woman in the magic school in Hometown and checking it out, they find a black winged member of the winged tribe, Nina, being hassled by some thugs but is more than able to handle herself as she drives them off with her magical aptitude. 
They learn the Joker gang has kidnapped her sister Mina and is holding her hostage, demanding Nina surrender, and she complies. Ryu and Kat follow her to level the playing field and rescue Mina, while Nina buries Boss Joker by herself. Joker laughs and emerges while revealing a demonic form but is still no match for the group. Nina thanks Ryu and Kat for their help, and for safety, they all escort Mina back to Windia together. They enter the city of Windia through its dungeon entrance, seeing prisoners who knew too much about an ominous child with black wings being born into the royal family. Entering the castle grounds, the group is immediately surrounded by guards, with Queen Hina waiting for them, and Mina hurries to the side of her mother, saying how her older sister saved her. However, the Queen publicly disavows any knowledge of another royal daughter, and understanding Nina plays along, as the group is thanked but escorted out. Nina doesn't really want to talk about it, though the mood is lifted by a novel magic show in front of the castle. A member of the Monkey Clan named Sten uses Ryu in a disappearing act to impress the ladies, but he has no style and has no grace after trying to bury Ryu alive. He apologizes and offers to serve them as recompense, joining them as they check out a circus nearby spotlighting a captured grassman. Continuing his journey, the group enters the craftsman village of Capitan, wherein several members of the town have entered the well looking for a lost child here, but not returned. As they join the search, they encounter a priest named Ray, who says there are dangerous monsters here, displaying a supernatural power as he single-handedly holds off the tunnel flooding while the group saves everyone from strange face-hugging parasites. As thanks, Ray offers to share a spell with them in Ryu's home, and returning back, Ryu sees Nero and the others have fixed the place up nicely and renamed the location Township. Venturing onward, Ryu encounters a pair of shamans who volunteer him to be a guinea pig for their fusion experiments. However, they unknowingly unlock Ryu's bloodline ability to turn into various dragons. Ryu's hidden ability bursts out with such power destroys the forest the shamans live in, and while their home is gone, the pair are more impressed that Ryu is a member of the dragon clan long thought gone. With nowhere to go, Ryu offers them a place to stay in Township and hires a carpenter from Capitan to renovate and expand their growing hideout. As they wait, they find a giant frog named Jean who asks their help in lifting the curse placed on him by a jilting witch to the west. Talking to the witch Nimufu, they find she is a bit self-absorbed and laments how only a frog loves her, but mentions a kiss from any young girl will change him back to normal. Helping Jean, it turns out instead of a giant frog, he's actually just a large frogman, but more importantly the crown prince of Simafort. He wishes to thank them back at his castle, and along the way, the group drops by the Wildcat restaurant where only the stronger served, as they almost end up chopped up and on the menu themselves. Jean is a very friendly and laid-back person, even as his throne is usurped, and an imposter has persuaded almost everyone in the castle except for the princess and a few others like a servant named Tata. To help her expose the imposter, the princess gives them a tool enabling them to breathe underwater, and while breaking Jean out of jail, Ryu spots the winged thief he's been looking for also locked up here. Jean actually enjoys being relieved of royal duty and allowed to live a normal life, but all the same, thinks the royal ring he gave to Namufu will prove his authenticity. Unfortunately, they find the witch at a private party, heaving in the bathroom and has dropped it in the toilet, and more unfortunately, must enter the strangely spacious toilet to retrieve it. Even more unfortunately, the imposter already thought of this angle and has a perfect royal ring already, and desperate, the princess declares a food war to settle things in the kitchen, as only the real Jean would be able to cook a certain dish a certain way. As the group's life is also on the line, they help out getting the insect ingredients, learning the imposter speaks often of St. Ava, and save Tata from being executed for trying to help Jean. As the showdown takes place, the imposter defeats Jean in his own game, but the contest was rigged from the start. Outraged, the princess attempts to blow up the castle, and while both princes try to stop her, the imposter turns out to be another demon in disguise, and after defeating him, Jean is able to disarm the security system. The kingdom saved, the king thanks them, and Jean declares he intends to continue his life free of royal responsibilities, and joins the group as they now assume custody of the winged thief. They learn her name is Patty, and present her to Trout as the real thief to clear Bao's name, but Patty accuses Trout of being the real criminal who hires thieves to increase his wealth. They cannot prove it at the time, but later Kilgore wants Bao to find evidence on Trout all the same. Bao accepts a job, but this time Ryu joins him, and together the friends find Trout has a secret dungeon with associates and prisoners, including Patty. Trout catches them down here and confronting them reveals he is also a demon in disguise, though the ranger tag team destroys him and frees Patty. Reporting all this to Kilgore, Val adds it's awfully suspicious they keep running into disguised demons in positions of power, and Ryu's reminded of the evil eye that called him the destined child. Elsewhere, the land around the town of Gate begins to decay rapidly, and though other rangers report on this strange sighting, they are also intimidated by the idea of fighting demons. Bao thinks of the demon he and Ryu encountered outside of Gade when they were kids and hearing the description, knows it to be the same one. They are now asked to investigate Gade and the demon there, and mention the grassman is able to talk to trees and can gain their insight from the great tree there. 
Beginning their new journey, they find themselves swallowed by a giant whale and free it from a cursed nightmare it's under. In return, the talking whale offers to sail them across the ocean, and the group here is the carnival with the grass man is over near the town of Tunlin. Along the way, they encounter heroes from centuries past living in quiet isolation, including Bo the Archer, Karn the Thief, and legendary immortal mage, Blue, who is up from her nap and is fine to join another adventure. They find the carnival just in time to prevent the grass man from being fed to a demon, but refusing to negotiate on the owner's terms, it turns out he was the demon the whole time, which intrigues Blue, and the group quickly defeats him. Now free, the plant person introduces themselves as Spar, and confirms through the arbor net that the forest near Gate has died, but recommends they talk to the Great Wise Tree to know more. Leading them there, the Great Wise Tree has actually forgotten many important details for some reason, and knows something is wrong, requesting a therapy pillow from Tunlin to help fix things. Unfortunately, the residents of the city cannot understand them without the aid of specific instruments, such as the flute and high fort. Seeing a need to guide them to the fortress high atop the cliffsides, Sten stretches his arms out just for Ryu, as the group sees it is inhabited by other monkey clan. Sten was once the leader of the bunch, and is still well known as a hero, but Sten claims he was a coward in the face of a terrible battle, separating from the group for now. Ryu overhears the new leader of High Fort, Shukei, attempting to rush the monkeys into war with ambitions of world domination, and she catches all of them in a trap to silence them. At the same time, Sten is met by his old friend Trubo, who is upset they all thought Sten was dead when he was just running away and hiding. More importantly, Sten hurt their princess, who loves Sten, whom they now need to rescue from Shukei. Knowing that monkeys alone are weak, but monkeys together are strong, Sten and Trubo team up to infiltrate Shukei's forces, as Sten reveals to the princess he's finally back to kick Shukei's tail. Though he is delayed by another trap door, they return to see Shukei hooking the princess up to a machine that converts the strength of a heart and turns it into energy. Shuke reveals she is a demon, but is no match for the team, as she also reveals she was trying to turn the fortress into a flying one. However, the machinery goes haywire and Sten leaves the group to safety as parts of the castle collapse, and afterwards, the princess thanks them with a famous flute. Taking their leave, Sten avoids saying goodbye to the princess, as he explains to the group that as an ex-soldier who has lost most of his friends to war, he's not really good with things like that. Returning with the flute, they find the holder of the therapy pillow is the queen, who is under a transformation effect that has so far made her morbidly obese. Being shrunk down enough to enter her body, the group fights an evil fatty demon causing all of this, saving the queen and ending her demonification. Gaining the therapy pillow as thanks, the group finally returns to the great tree, and with the item they are able to enter its mind and see what the problem is. Navigating past an invisible maze, they find yet another demon behind the memory loss, who claims the tree knew something inconvenient to their god. In fact, the demon recognizes Ryu personally, as it was also the same demon who wiped everyone's memory of him in gate when he was a child. Settling the score, the group destroys the demon before every memory is gone, and the great tree shares what it can. The tree confirms a demon is sucking the life force from the world, and there are people to the south that can help them fight the demon, leading them to Rand's hometown of Farmtown. In fact, they watch Rand's mother Daisy throw out a solicitation to build a St. Ava church on their land, and scolds her son for leaving to find his own work elsewhere. She puts the group to work in the field, but later they find her gone, and a soldier of St. Ava claims she has converted her faith and left suddenly for the Grand Church. Rand knows this is a trick, but they see the priest Ray again, confirming this to be true and breaking up any fights. Rand insists they investigate their headquarters, but they would need a means to fly to get there. Discovering strange machinery in their town hideout, they scout an engineer named Ichichi, who seeks to make a flying machine like the Great Bird of Windia. Wondering more about this Great Bird, Nina seeks audience with her mother, who shares that there is a legend that when a child with black wings is born into the royal family, there will be trouble in the country, and the only way to avert it is to kill the child. However, when Nina was born, they refused to kill her, and instead exiled her to protect her from those who knew the legend. The Queen also mentions the King is bedridden with illness, and conveniently, a messenger from St. Ava is there to push conversion to the St. Ava faith, which he promises will remove his sudden illness. The King refuses to push beliefs onto others for his own benefit, and insulted, the messenger leaves, promising he will regret the choice. Nina then asks to be let into the basement where the powers of the Great Bird are sealed, and despite the fact the change would be permanent, Nina opts to take the trial by herself. Solving the puzzles and defeating the Guardian in her path, Nina is shocked to encounter Nina from 500 years ago, who is her direct ancestor. Original Nina says it's her fault their bloodline no longer has the power of the Great Bird as freely, as she chose to marry a man from a different tribe and it has weakened their powers. Nina grants Nina the mark she needs to begin the ceremony, but that night, Nina steals the mark and begins the ceremony herself, apologizing that she did not know her sister's pain history or the sacrifice she was planning to make, intending to allow Nina to live and defeat the demons, and she will serve as the Great Bird instead. 
With Mina's help, the group reaches the headquarters of the Grand Church in all its splendor, but finds there are others who oppose the imposing church. One patron named Clarice firmly believes the church takes the souls of people and feeds them to demons, and directs them to a hideout filled with those who are also opposing Saint Ava. The leader of this resistance is Taiga, another of the Warren clan who is immediately infatuated with Kat at first glance while declaring Saint Ava is a fraud more than a god. Unfortunately, while they have a plan to attack the Grand Church, they lack the funds that were to be provided by their sponsor who has not returned from the Thieves' Tomb yet. Choosing to work together, the group checks out the area to find Patty is there among the tricks and traps of the tomb, and after securing the funds, find out Patty was also the sponsor for Taiga's group. Taiga thanks them, but then immediately asks Kat to marry him, who is reluctant to accept the surprise proposal. Making preparations for their attack, they first raid a prominent church of St. Ava, finding a hidden basement and seeing firsthand its pastor is actually a demon who is indeed helping collect souls to send to Ava's god. Collecting what they need to infiltrate, Taiga explains their next step is to publicly expose the truth of the founder of St. Ava, Habaruku, during his sermon. As the founder talks, he proclaims there are imposters among them, revealing a bound Clarice to a crowd that wishes to lynch her. With strange powers, Habaruku learns about Taiga and his rebellion, and also exposes Clarice's hidden love for Taiga too. Clarice expresses confidence in Taiga, spurring Taiga to drop his proposal to Kat and instead realize his love for Clarice as well. Approaching Habaruku, Taiga does his best to challenge Habaruku but is no match for the priest, as Habaruku is untouchable and defeats him in a single blow. He then slams Clarice down, using them as an example of their god Evan's power, killing them both with his magic to the prayers of the crowd, as the group prepares to retaliate. Following Habaruku, after he finishes his sermon, the priest calls over Rei to teach the group the strength of their god, and though Rei feels both he and Ryu have a unique understanding between them, he reluctantly accepts they must fight. Revealing he too has the power of the dragon, the sheer force of both titans clash, as Ryu discovers a new form within himself, the green dragon, able to defeat Rei's dark one. Afterwards, Rei explains power produces power when it comes to dragons, giving his power to Ryu and telling him to defeat Saint Ava with it. He knows Saint Ava is wrong, but it's all he's ever known, dying while sharing Daisy is being held upstairs. As Ran frees his mother, she is straight to the point of them leaving, though she still has nothing but stinging words for her son. Rand is caught by a crushing wall trap and disappointed in her son, Daisy pushes him out of harm's way to hold back the wall herself. She tells him he still has things to do and needs to be good and listen to her, admitting he is a good boy as the wall crushes her before him. Now pursuing Habaruku with stronger intent, he gleefully leads them on a dangerous chase, where deep in the basement, behind a laser-trapped hallway, Ryu finds a familiar old man still alive but strapped to a machine. His energy is being sucked out to feed a demon and he begs them to release him, even if it means killing him alongside destroying the machine. Adeptly able to break just the machine and starting a chain reaction, the old man is impressed and uses his magic to teleport them all out safely while the Grand Church collapses. Safely in Township, the old man is revealed to be blind and is shocked to hear his rescuer is Ryu and asks if he recognizes his own father, Gainer. Ryu doesn't remember him, but Gainer reminds him of childhood memories including his sister Yua and Ryu sees it truly is his father. Gainer explains that fateful day when they retrieved Yua from her nap, he ran into the demon who erased everyone's memory of him and kidnapped him as part of their plan. He learned firsthand the god he believed in was a demon trying to destroy the world, and furthermore, simply believing in the teachings contributes to it as well. Though, without the machine defeated energy, the demon will seek other sources of life, like trees. At this time, they get an update from Aichichi on the mysterious machine beneath Township and learn that it is a flying mechanism, but is powered by a strange device. Recognizing the device, Gainer steps inside, affirming it is the same as a church and that it converts life energy from its host. He apologizes to his son for their brief time together, but is more than willing to give his life energy to something he believes in now, powering up the machine and enabling the entire town to rip itself from the ground and levitate anywhere. Traveling to Gate, the group finds Father Hulk preparing to kill the dragon under the assumption it will restore the forest, but as the bomb goes off, it only succeeds in slightly shifting the dragon enough to unblock a couple of side doors. However, swarms of flying demons now erupt out, killing anyone they can catch. Hulk sees the mania running wild on him and sees he made a terrible mistake in disturbing the dragon protecting them and asks Ryu to find an expert on this dragon, a thief named Patty. Hearing the situation, Patty comes running at once and the dragon speaks to their hearts directly, telling them to stay back and it is too weak now to keep the demons past the seal. Hearing this confirmation, Father Hulk laughs, revealing he was Habaruku in disguise, and he quickly seizes Patty, explaining that the only way to break the seal the Dragon Clan made is by sacrificing the life of a Dragon Clansman. Since killing the large dragon did not work, that leaves Ryu or Patty, and Patty cries out to Ryu as her big brother, revealing she is his long-lost sister, Yua. 
Quickly, the large dragon moves to shield her and Ryu battles the demon, defeating the head of Saint Eva once and for all. The dragon then asks Ryu if he intends to defeat the demons now, and confirming this, the dragon turns into a Dragon Clan member that reveals she is his mother, Valerie, before dying and opening the gate, trusting Ryu to win. In the darkness beyond, the group finds a tall tower descending deep down and defeating the demons dwelling within finds the dragon town of Delogany. Ryu is welcomed and identified immediately as the destined child, and the elder explains what that entails. Long ago, a dragon defeated the goddess Miria, once known as Tyr, but she would leave a scar on the world called the Seed of Evil. The seed would feed off of people's fears, desperation, and hatred until it would grow into a powerful demon named Death Evan. Death Evan would spread across the world and be difficult to fight while it was still formless. So, the Dragon Clan chose to live underground and wait until the day the demon took shape and went into the human world. The time has now come to act and Ryu is the best dragon for the job. Ryu's grandfather introduces himself and speaks of his daughter and Ryu's mother, Valerie, who was the chosen maiden to go out into the world and check on the state of things, including Death Evan. She was given a dragon tear pendant that could see into the hearts of people and left the brood, emerging in the town of Gate and choosing to investigate the strange new church worshipping St. Eva. Tending to the church was the preacher Gaynor who fell in love immediately with Valerie, and the feeling was mutual. They would soon marry and conceive a child, though Valerie would still communicate through the dragon god statues, reporting she did not discover what is feeding energy to Death Evan. Though she sensed something strange about the Saint Eva faith, time went on and nothing happened, as she grew more comfortable, had Yua as a second child, and began to forget her mission. One day, demons would attack the village, and while Gaynor would defend the village, Valerie would check on the seal and see how it is weakened. Knowing she could sacrifice herself to strengthen the seal, she made the quick decision to do so, turning into a massive dragon to block all cracks. Gaynor would see the dragon, as well as her drop pendant, and understand what happened, choosing to tell his children their mother died that day. Seeing others who look exactly like Yua and Rei, Ryu learns that means they were members of the Dragon Clan and Black Dragon Clan respectively. Ryu is then led to where he can learn the ultimate dragon power in Fini, but first must choose who among his allies must be sacrificed for this power. However, Ryu chooses none of his friends and wrestles with his feelings until he blacks out and obtains the ultimate power from the struggle. Further below, lurking in the darkness, Ryu and Bao face the demon of their past, Baruberry, that has put them on the road together, and now show they are no longer frightened children anymore. Seeing this, the demon taunts Ryu into a 1v1 duel, and accepting the challenge, Ryu blows away the nightmare, able to move on. Beyond is an elderly man by the name of Evan who declares his intent to pass through the gates and give the world despair, and says the party is already dead, encasing them in crystal in an instant. Ryu manages to break out, but out of spite, Evan shatters the rest of the group as Ryu is helpless to watch. The screaming of Ryu's heart breaks Evan's bindings on him as the young hero dashes after the manifestation of Malice, powering through Evan's attacks and slicing him down in a single blow. Evan staggers back and in defiance, ascends into his full demonic form, and reaching deep within, Ryu clings to the bonds of his friends to summon the power of the mighty Anfini, restoring his allies back from their shattered remains. United again, Ryu, Bao, Nina, Kat, Rand, Sten, Jean, Spar, and Blue work together to defeat the malicious legacy sapping the planet. As Death Heaven disappears, it says it will dream of destruction until its return, and Nina points out the power of the dragon was not for destroying things, but to unite friends who believe in each other. As the game ends, Ryu thinks about Death Evan's words and realizes the threat is not totally removed, only slumbering, but for now the seal and gate has to be replaced. He thinks to transform into a giant dragon like his mother and become the stopgap himself, but one step ahead, Gaynor now comes in with a flying town, saying how proud he is of everyone. Dropping Township directly onto the cave, he adds this will work until the next destined child is born, and in the meanwhile, they must all prepare for that day. As the friends go on their separate ways, they spread their positive beliefs in an effort to never see this terror again. Breath of Fire 2 has enjoyed the success of selling over 360,000 copies worldwide. Thank you for watching this recap, I hope it helped, and if you liked this, check out the recap for the rest of the Breath of Fire series, especially since most of them connect to each other in some way. Subscribe for more recaps like this, share with someone who could use it, and shout out to the patrons and channel members. If you would like to support the show yourself, please follow the links in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next Battlefield.